The last of our 2013 free response questions, number six. We're looking at a chart. Compound one and two are hydrocarbons. They are um, C2H6O, and we're looking at two possible structures. Compound one and compound two in the data table share the same empirical formula, but we're noticing they have very different physical properties. Letter A, the skeletal structure for one of the two compounds is started in the box below. The part I says we want to complete the Lewis electron dot diagram for the molecule, including any lone or non-bonding pairs of electrons. We can spot here that they're telling us in the second box, called box Y, notice that uh, we're being asked to draw on the second possible structure. Well, taking a quick peek and trying to get an idea here, one of the structures completely soluble in water, telling us it's very polar, likes dissolve likes. Compound 2 is showing an area that would be considered polar, this OH region. This is an organic molecule called an alcohol, the OH. Whereas the other one is only slightly soluble, so we're looking at something that would be less likely to dissolve in water. So drawing or completing the drawing for structure 1 in the box called X. They started us by uh, connecting the carbon to hydrogens and they had another set of carbon hydrogen and then an OH. I'll place in green what we had to add on. We had single bonds connecting the three hydrogens to the first carbon. We had a single bond connecting the two carbons, another single bond connecting the two H's to the second carbon, and onward we go between the O and the H. We also had to draw in the two dot structures, the two lone pairs on this uh, alcohol functional group. CH3, CH2, OH. This is a polar molecule. It would have the um, ability to undergo H bonding, very strong intermolecular attraction. The polarity of the molecule meeting the criteria also, and since it's polar, we know that is called a dipole-dipole interaction. So in the second structure, we have, remember we have the same empirical formula, C2H6O, but we're decreasing the solubility. And if it's less likely to dissolve in water, we're trying to take away its polarity. So here, to organize, we end up creating a mirror image molecule. CH3, O in the center, CH3 does create a polar molecule, but it does not exhibit the hydrogen bonding. So it is polar, so we would see some dipole-dipole in a well along with London dispersion forces. But since it is a polar region, it's less likely to dissolve in water, not as readily because we've taken away the H bonding. So structure I, part I of our first question, we finished the drawing of this alcohol. And the second part, II, of question uh, 6A, the second structure, CH3, O, CH3, showing us an ether with the oxygen in the center and the methyl groups on e either side. What else is it asked? Let's take a peek. On the basis of the Lewis electron dot diagrams we drew in part A and in the information in the data table above, identify compound 1 or 2 as being represented in the box X. Justify your answers in terms of intermolecular forces. So identify X. Is it compound 1 or compound 2? We said it had to be compound 2, very high solubility in water a higher boiling point, point indicating a greater intermolecular attraction, which indeed is the uh, criteria of a hydrogen bond. So for letter B, we just want to put those into words. In box X is compound 2 from the data table. It exhibits a hydrogen bonding, very strong intermolecular attraction. So we see hy that hydrogen bonding will increase its solubility in water.
There we go. Box Y, we could comment, our second box that we drew, less soluble in water due to its lack of hydrogen bonding or inability to hydrogen bonding to H bond, inability to form H bonds. There, that makes sense. So the box X is compound 2, just to kind of clarify. Compound 2, we said, was very soluble. This has the hydrogen bonding ability. So compound 2, we drew in box X, increased solubility due to the hydrogen bonding. Very key to say that. Box Y must be the first compound. It's less soluble in water, much lower boiling point, telling us it has weaker intermolecular attractions. The inability to form hydrogen bonding would explain why compound 1 is what we drew in the second box. Let's see what's next. Next page here. This time we're looking at two structures. We have a carbon in the center, two H's, two CL's, dichloromethane, compound 1. Boiling point low at 39.6 and vapor pressure high at 353, so weak intermolecular attractions. Carbon tetrachloride, here this is a complete nonpolar molecule, higher boiling point, 76.7, uh, lower vapor pressure, 89. Dichloromethane has a solubility in water greater than carbon tetrachloride does. Now remember, likes dissolve likes. Water is a polar molecule. Account for this observation in terms of IMFs, intermolecular forces, for each of the solutes in water. Commenting on why dichloromethane would dissolve in water, a little bit better than carbon tetrachloride would. We have to comment on both molecules. So we'll go back to our answer page and get letter C ready. Since dichloromethane is polar, and again, that was simply stated just to kind of clarify there, dichloro, see these regions that are different here? Those dipoles do not cancel each other. Dichloromethane has a region that's much more negative compared to this region up here that's much more positive. This is a polar molecule. It's non-symmetrical in the way that they have it drawn. So dichloromethane is polar since its dipoles do not cancel. And just really important that we said it is polar. Uh, it's unsymmetrical would be another way to say that. Carbon tetrachloride, our second structure, carbon tetrachloride is nonpolar a completely symmetrical molecule, no areas in which the dipoles would not cancel. So it's nonpolar since all dipoles cancel. In other words, you could say it's a symmetrical molecule. So we have dipole-dipole forces in the first structure. It's a polar molecule. The dipole-dipole intermolecular forces from dichloro, how about we do this, Cl2H2C. That's our structure CH2, Cl2. That's our dichloromethane here. So we have this dipole-dipole. It's a polar structure, dipole-dipoles. So intermolecular attractions will have a greater solubility in water. Alrighty. Um, keep in mind we've we've commented on both. Very critical according to directions. Carbon tetrachloride, nonpolar. We should maybe comment here. The only um, type of intermolecular attraction are dispersion forces, and the dispersion forces have no attraction to the polar water molecule. We know that water is indeed highly polar. Likes dissolve likes. You could even add this in here for good measure. Likes dissolve likes. Polar with, with polar, nonpolar with nonpolar, but certainly none in between. So there's a very thorough answer for the letter C. In terms of intermolecular forces, the Part D is asking us, uh, explain why dichloromethane has a higher vapor pressure 
than carbon tetrachloride. Again, this is just going to be commenting on the stronger intermolecular attractions. It's going to take more energy to separate the molecules. So dichloroethane I'm sorry that it's dichloromethane. There's only one carbon in there. Let me correct my nomenclature. Dichloromethane, this structure right up here, dichloromethane, it has dipole-dipole attractions. Polar to polar, dipole-dipole. Whereas carbon tetrachloride, CCL4, it only has dispersion forces or London dispersion forces. These, of course, are stronger intermolecular attractions, intermolecular, uh, intermolecular forces. Since these are stronger, the molecules have a greater tendency to stick together. It's going to take more energy to separate them into the gaseous phase. Therefore, they'll have a lower vapor pressure. Carbon tetrachloride very easily separates, very easily separates, therefore uh, much weaker weaker dispersion uh, weaker intermolecular attractions and will form a gaseous phase quite readily so carbon tetrachlorides london dispersion forces must be stronger than dichloro's weak dipole dipole forces we're looking at just a simple explanation there just commenting on why each of those have uh, you know the different vapor pressures. Dichloromethane with its polarity, a high vapor pressure, takes a lot of energy to get the molecules to separate, form a gaseous phase. Carbon tetrachloride with its low intermolecular attractions, just the dispersion force, takes less energy to get those molecules to separate into the vapor phase. So we'll comment on that. Less energy is needed to separate molecules into the gaseous phase. And that would be plenty of commenting there for an A+. I think there's one more. Let's take a read here. Last part of our last question. We're looking at a structure. Complete Lewis electron diagram of methanal, formaldehyde is its common name, is drawn in the box below. So we have this carboxyl group here, C double bond O, two electron pairs. Molecules of this compound can form hydrogen bonds with water. In this box, draw a water molecule in a correct orientation to show a hydrogen bond between a molecule of methanal and a water molecule. Use the dashed line to represent the hydrogen bonding. So pretty easy, really. We just want to show how one structure is attracted to the other. So the original drawing that they had, HCH, double bond O, with its two lone pairs of electrons. Of course, right here, we'd have an attraction in a water molecule, water being bent. One possible arrangement with drawing the actual attraction as dashed lines. We're just looking at orientating the hydrogen from a water close to the oxygen from the methanol. You know, another correct answer, you could certainly orientate a water down at this thing. You're just kind of showing how hydrogen bonds form. The oxygen here with the hydrogen here. There's the attraction. Not over here. That does not meet the criteria. Leave this end of the molecule alone. But the oxygen to the hydrogen. Oxygen from the methanol to the hydrogen on the on the water, and that's an H bond. And there's the A plus for this intermolecular attraction 